Systemic lupus erythematosus, also known as SLE. That's probably what you've heard it as, as SLE, or just plain lupus. Okay, so you've heard of this disease before. Let's talk about what it is exactly. We're including it in our uh, immunological section because it's an autoimmune disorder, okay? What happens is we have progressive systemic inflammatory disease resulting in major organ system failure, okay? So the, the entire, when we talk, pro, okay, so let's break this down really quick. Progressive means it's worsening. Systemic means throughout the entire body. And then we all know what inflammation means. So we have this, this inflammation throughout our entire body that's, that continues and continues. And this results in major, major organ system failure. Okay, so we're talking heart, lungs, uh, our major, major organs, okay, begin to fail because of this massive inflammatory response that occurs throughout the body. Okay, so what happens is the immune system becomes hyperactive and it starts to attack healthy tissue. Okay, so our immune system normally acts very appropriately. Um, we, you know, step on a rock or we step on a, a little twig, we get a splinter or whatever, or, or we, we have an immune response activate and we prevent that infection, okay? We kill all that bad bacteria, we get a cold, we, we attack it and everything and we get rid of it, okay? What happens in SLE or lupus is that our immune system becomes hyperactive. It starts to act too well, basically, and it starts to attack healthy tissue. It just starts to attack the body itself, okay? So where the immune system used to be, you know, a little soldier for us, it starts to, it starts to attack the body. Okay, and it starts to treat the body like a foreign body, and it starts to attack it, and it starts to kill this healthy tissue. And currently, there is no known cure, okay? That's what's so hard about this one specifically, is it's an autoimmune disorder where our, our immune system actually fights our own tissue and kills our own tissue, and there's not really anything we can do about it. So what's our assessment with this? What we're going to assess for is, is there are a few things that kind of precipitate um, flare-ups of lupus. Those things are UV light, infection, or stress. Okay, so if patients exposed to UV light, they may experience a flare-up. If they have even a new infection, a small infection, we might, because our, our immune system is going to become hyperactive at that point, so we might see uh, additional flare-ups. We might see additional um, symptoms of lupus. Stress is also going to be a, a cause of flare-ups, okay? So let's look over here at our, our uh, chart here. The biggest... Um, symptom that I want you to keep in mind here is going to be this butterfly rash. Okay, so butterfly rash, let's say here's our eyes. I know this is a little creepy looking here. Um, here's our nose. Here's our mouth, right? So butterfly rash is this rash right here that occurs. It looks kind of like a butterfly that goes uh, along the bridge of the nose under the eyes. That is known as the butterfly rash, okay? That butterfly rash is kind of specific to um, Lupus, okay, it's different than like the raccoon eyes that we'd see with like a, a basal skull fracture because this butterfly rash is kind of just this rash that looks kind of like a butterfly that goes right across the eyes there, the bridge of the nose. That's going to be a big thing I want you to keep in mind, and that could be associated with the patient being outside uh, or going out into the sunlight. So, let's, so that's the big thing I want you to keep in mind. You're going to see fatigue, you're going to see inflammation of the pleura, inflammation of the pericardium. Again, remember inflammation, inflammation, right? Um, we talked about photosensitivity, low-grade fever, they're going to have ulcers, aches, they're just going to feel really crappy, but on top of that, they're going to have this inflammation and this butterfly rash, okay? And that may be exacerbated by uh, uh, an infection, by stress, or by UV light, okay? Two other labs you're going to see with these patients are going to be an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate and elevated C-reactive C protein, or CRP, okay? ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate and CR, uh, CRP stands for C-reactive protein. Both of these labs are used to measure inflammation. Okay, so ESR, CRP are kind of inflammatory labs that we're gonna draw to assess the rate and the, the amount of inflammation in, in our patient. So we will draw those two labs and we'll assess is our patient experiencing this inflammatory state, okay? ESR, CRP, keep those ones in mind, all right? So what are we going to do for these patients? We're going to assess respiratory status. Remember, we're going to have inflammation of the pleura. And so we want to make sure our patient is, is able to breathe, getting the air that they need, or is this getting to the state that we need supportive uh, respiratory um, 
uh, support. We're going to assess end organ function. We're talking liver, kidneys, etc. We're going to assess that those are working appropriately, that, that um, blood flow is appropriate to those areas, and those, uh, those areas are those organs are able to work and to function. We're going to plan rest periods. Remember, these patients are going to be very tired, very exhausted. And so when we allow for them to rest, it's going to give them the energy they need to carry out their ADLs, to take the medications they need, to do the, the tests that they need. We're going to need to, uh, to re identify triggers. Uh, so is there any stress in their life? Did they have, were they recently, did they recently get a cold? So infection. When they go outside, um, are they, oops. Are they experiencing an exacerbation of symptoms shortly after going outside into the UV light? So these types of things we need to we need to assess. We need to find ways to work around in the patient's life to kind of eliminate uh, this. And then we're going to refer to a dietitian for a, uh, dietary assistance. Remember, they're going to be weak. They're going to be tired. They're going to be exhausted. So we can help with the dietitian. We can get them the nutrients that they need to help them kind of uh, get as much energy as they can when they're able to eat. Some of the medications we're going to give here. We're going to give glucocorticoids. Why are we giving glucocorticoids? Okay, glucocorticoids are going to help reduce inflammation. Remember, we have naturally occurring glucocorticoids that occur and are released from our adrenal glands. Okay? So normally we have steroids that are released from our, our uh, adrenal glands. One of those steroids, types of steroids, is glucocorticoids. Remember, glucocorticoids do a lot of things that help with swelling. They decrease the inflammatory response. They um, will increase blood sugars, and they can cause osteoporosis and things. But they're going to decrease inflammation, and they're going to decrease um, uh, immune response. So this is an autoimmune disease. So we give glucocorticoids. We lower that immune response, and we also decrease inflammation. So we kind of knock out those two things in one right there. So glucocorticoids are medications that we can give where they're normally naturally occurring in the body. We can also give glucocorticoid medications. Those are going to be your steroids, okay? Um, then we also have NSAIDs. That can also help with uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, right? So that's going to help with um, the inflammation as well. And then we give medications like cyclophosphamide. That is an immunosuppressive agent. Remember, our immune system is hyperactive here. We're, we're attacking ourselves, okay? Our, our, our immune system is going against our good tissue, our good organs, and it's trying to kill those all. So we give these immunosuppressive agents to try to counteract that and try to make sure that our patient is, uh, we're not, we're trying to slow that or at least try to help with that uh, autoimmune response and give the patient the uh, uh, more time, more comfort and everything um, as they are experiencing the symptoms of SLE or lupus, all right? I hope that provides you guys a basic understanding of lupus. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me. Check out this lecture again.